Hey, it's Bill Gross, the LA probate expert. And this is our probate weekly call we do every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'll have to repeat that because I'm in Los Angeles. It's 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Probateweekly.com if you're watching this on the a recording and want to come on live. We do this on a live Zoom where you can participate, ask questions, and come to the chat box. Um, and uh, we do this, we also live stream it to Facebook and uh, YouTube and other social media. So feel free to jump in there and catch it. So most weeks, I like to have a guest, uh, you know, professional to teach us about the business. We've had vendors, we've had uh, various other parties. I'm excited to have today an attorney, uh, and I guess really there's two types of attorneys. There's those that, when you're in probate, uh, how to get you through the process, through the thickets and the mess that is the court system. And there's other attorneys whose uh, primary function in life is to keep you out of court by planning ahead and doing an estate plan. And so I'm lucky to have today uh, with us a um, uh, attorney that I've met and worked with the last couple of years and who is excellent, has some really innovative ideas on how to help plan a state so they can avoid probate, Laron Eliab of with Eliab Law. So Laron, welcome to our call today. Oh, thank you for having me today, Bill. So just, just to start a little background, like where you're from, where you grew up, and then how you get into law. Yeah. Um, so I uh, was born, raised, and uh, grew up here was went to law school here went to ucla so i the whole whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. what <laughs> i missed that on the bio hold on one second <laughs> I, went, okay. I went to ucla for my bachelor's and loyola for my law degree so oh okay that's I, good. I've, been, okay. I've been in i've been in uh in la almost all my life um and so uh i i, I was i was into uh in, back when in ucla i was into a, a lot of uh mathematical subjects and, and uh, some science subjects. And I, I eventually went on to law school um, and I tried to mix both of those uh, passions together with my writing and, and math uh, ideas. And so I, I turned into this law, the specific law field, which is the trust and estates law firm, uh, the, the field of trust and estates, which has a lot to do with tax planning and property tax and, um, all sorts of taxation issues, whether it's capital gains, and along with the probate aspect of avoidance um, and trying to get uh, your family uh, through the thick of the water uh, without any hiccups. Or as and, few hiccups as possible. Exactly. <laughs> Good. So, yeah, and so, like I, so is that fair description that your job is really, or your job at your business, is really to help people avoid some of the legal entanglements, the probate, uh, kind of catches people up, people up in their problems. Is that a third way to put it? Uh, that's the best way to put it. Um, usually, you know, it's it's funny. You, you you started off with, you know, there's some attorneys that help you uh, try to plan properly, and there's some attorneys that you know, too bad you didn't plan, and now you have to go through the probate process or some litigation. Um, I actually do both, right? I I I do the planning. I do litigation. Uh, and it's pretty pretty fifty fifty here uh, on on both of those. So uh, I definitely see how it is in court. Uh, I, I, I use that to guide my other clients uh, through proper planning, and I think that's the the way to do it, uh, as opposed to some people who just do planning, which is great. They might know how to plan properly, but I don't know if they see everything that you're supposed to see these days. It makes sense to me. I almost feel like I would be. Head, uh, you know, heads up on some attorneys you know, that have been in probate court a lot and seeing the mistakes being litigated, and I see what the judge says live and in person. There's something about being there and, and being in the trenches, I think, makes you more effective when you do both like that. So to me, that's very attractive. Um, and so just to kind of set up for the callers today, we have 91 people growing on the call. You know, primarily, this is uh, real estate agents and investors who are looking how to get more deals. And probate, there's one way to look at probate, which is, you kind of like a miner, you get your, your pick in your, in your little um, uh, pail and your map. And in probate, that's your data and your cold call, you talk to attorneys, you look for cases. That's one route. There's another route to go, which is if you're already in the business, talking to customers, bringing them value. And then in the course of that discussion, uh, being a probate expert or real estate expert and using those relationships to help you position you to get referral from business from them. And so I've used the estate playing attorney relationship as a way to position myself with my clients so that they'll say, oh, by the way, my family's selling a house, my friend's selling a house, my friend's in probate. So we think about today how you can establish a relationship 
that benefits your clients might not be a, a lead right away. And so as, as I talk with uh, Leron today, just think about how you could be bringing that value to your prospects, clients as you talk uh, in the process. So Leron, uh, to me as a practitioner, not as a, a, an attorney, I can't give legal advice, but as a businessman, I would say almost any person who owns a property in California should have an estate plan. Maybe it's a living trust or something else, but it should have something that anticipates that they may be incapacitated or God forbid pass. Fair answer, rather than buying it your own name, you should have something of a, of a different strategy than that? No, that's that's the, the perfect way to look at it. It's, if you own any piece of real property, uh, most likely your gross value here in California is over the minimum amount. And um, since you're over the minimum amount, you need something called the, the living trust or revocable trust in order to avoid the courts when you pass away or when you are incapacitated. Uh, there are proceedings, um, obviously probate and conservatorship proceedings that are done uh, to move title from one person to the next, right? That's the whole point of probate is to move title from you who has just passed away to your children or to whoever it is um, through the pr uh, process called probate. And at the end of the day, title is perfected in those people's names. Yeah. So we try to avoid that process by doing it with a trust. And once you do the trust, you don't have to go through the courts at all. By far, and again, I'm not an attorney, so I have to be careful never to give people legal advice, but I'm allowed to give my personal experience and business uh, insights. To me, the by far the biggest misconception is, oh, I don't have to worry about a living trust or estate plan. I have a will, so I'm good. So go ahead. How would you answer that if we weren't, if you weren't giving me legal advice, but were you and I just talking in a bar after a couple of beers and, and we're friends, what would you say about that? How, how wrong is that answer? Oh, it's, it's very wrong. So uh, a will is what I like to call a ticket to probate. Um, it's an admin one to going to court. Uh, with a will, it, it, you are basically giving instructions to the judge of what you want to be done with your assets. Um, now, those instructions, if you literally take them and put them into a trust, uh, it does completely different things, right? It tells the judge, I don't want you to do handle any of this. I'm going to do this privately in an office with an attorney or with my loved ones. And we're going to figure this all out. So it's not in public records one, right? You could figure out what Michael Jackson owned, let's just say, right? It's not so hard. It's in, in the public records. Um, so you, you get that out of the way. And then the fees of probate is the other major thing that everybody wants to avoid, right? On a million dollar house, it could cost you uh, almost $46,000 for the fees to the attorney plus the fees to the person in charge or the executor. Mm. Um, and that's minimum, right? So if there's more like sales of houses or some litigation involved in there, that's just raise that up and double, you know, of $46,000 easily. So you want to avoid those fees um, by spending a, a couple extra dollars right now, getting yourself into a trust, making sure all your choices are done properly, and you effectively avoid all that hassle. You know, the way I describe it, uh, when people say they have a will is having a will is kind of like pre printing the DMV forms and filling them out, being able to take the DMV, you still have to go to the DMV. The DMV still has to review your forms. You're going to make a couple of mistakes. You have to go back to the end of the line or make another appointment to use the DMV parlance. And it seems that, that a will in some regards might even be worse because unless the will is giving some specific change of allocation, it gives the opponent, the other side, maybe something to complain about. The signature's wrong, the notary's wrong, the this is wrong, the wording's wrong. It's almost like you could even create more work rather than less work. It, it, again, it's a, I don't want to make a legal conclusion, but there are circumstances clearly where you can go backwards rather than forwards, right? Well, yeah, and, and when you do a will and a proceeding in court, it's not just your loved ones who could come and challenge anything. It's anybody, right? If let's say uh, your friend comes in and says, oh yeah, uh, Joe promised me uh, the farm when, I passed the, when he passes away, and I have, uh, I don't know, some sort of record that says it, well, that could be a, a, a challenge to the will, and now you're stuck in court for another year or two at least, especially right now with coronavirus. Uh, it's backed up, and you could ask Bill about that. I know he knows. Uh, everything is set out at least 120 days from now, uh, most of the time, when you get a, any sort of hearing in court. So it's just it's just a tough uh, tough road to go 
once you have to go to court for any reason. Yeah. Uh, especially yeah, it's, I, it's a will. Yeah, I know we're, we're talking about- I'm on about, a conference call, what's up? Okay. I know we were, we were talking the other day, and uh, so for example, as a common procedure, when a wife is supposed to, I'm sorry, when a property is accidentally left out of a trust called the Hexa petition, and people you know, might learn, well, it's not a problem, if it's left out of the trust, we'll just add in, we'll use this petition, but in LA County, Hexa petitions are being scheduled out 150 to 180 days right now, so it's a shortcut, it's like the DMV, well, you don't need to go in this line, you go in that line, uh, but you're still going <laughs> through the DMV, and it's still going to be uh, a line of a bit. Um, and Bill, if you don't mind me saying about that, yeah. if you're going to, when you're talking about a Hexstat petition, which yeah. by the way, just means that you forgot to put something in a trust and you're trying right. to put something in the trust, right. um, after death, uh, it's, it's, if, if it doesn't work, you now have to go through probate. So <laughs> you just added additional to, that line. <laughs> to your probate, uh, in order to get something done, yeah. uh, which, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't want to wish on my worst enemy at the end of the day. Yeah. You'd rather be in the DMV than going through that. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you enjoy the video, uh, your next step is to sign up for the webinar by clicking the link above. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and comment below. Be happy to address them. See you soon.